Or would it, would it upset you if I had a fight with him? Can I fight with him? Like, I'm not saying a fist fight, but could I have an argument with him? Would Two men like? enter, one man leave. <laughs> one man enter, one man leave. Who's that? That's uh, Mad Max Part 3, oh. Tina Turner. Okay. We don't need another hero. <laughs> Do you ever think that, that there are some names, <clears throat> some people's names, and when you say their name, you just think of a soul? Like, yeah. Neil Diamond, Cracklin Rose, and <laughs> Are we going now? Oh, well, okay, sorry. <laughs> Comes to something when your co-host tells you you've got to get your acting on it. Right, okay, press the thing. <clears throat> hello. When you say Elvis, it's like very much. Uh, hello. Mm -hmm. uh, welcome to another episode. Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and creatures of the internet world. Welcome to creatures another... Creatures of the creatures night. Creatures of the internet world. Shh, you're not on screen yet. No. Um, Welcome to another episode of 20 Minutes Till Pickup. Uh, if you've never seen this show before, well done. And if you have seen this for, show before, I'm sorry, it doesn't get any better. In fact, do you know what? I'll tell you this now, like five minutes ago, it was much worse than it had ever been. Like, I mean, you might think this episode's bad, but man, we just did one that was like really bad. Because we did it on Periscope. You know Periscope? Do you know what Periscope is? It's that live thing. So while we're talking, then people are like, messaging and then some of them they aren't even messaging they're just sending love which is lovely but then you're looking at it you know you get distracted like have you ever had that thing sorry i'll introduce you in a minute but have you ever had that thing where someone's got like a like a spot you know like a a, a thing on their face or or like food caught between their teeth and you just can't concentrate on what they're saying because you're like oh look at that thing that i'm not meant to be looking at in fact that happened to me once with a psychic can i tell you that that i met this psychic guy at a party and he had really bad teeth and um and not that it, it having bad teeth is a bad thing but so i was talking to this psychic guy and what was going through my head was god his teeth are like really bad and then i realized that he's psychic so he would know that i was thinking that so i had to make myself think Gosh, you're very handsome. Gosh, you're very handsome. So that if he was listening to me, he wouldn't be upset. Anyway, um, so I thought you said sidekick. I'm not. I'm not interested. What a sidekick. I'm not interested. I'm not. In, I've not introduced you. <laughs> God, I'm sorry. I'm still reeling from that terrible podcast, ladies and gentlemen. My co-host this week. I've never met him before. Don't know anything about him at all. I do totally know everything about him. It's going to be a nightmare. Please welcome Jeremy Ratchford. <laughs> So, Jeremy, what brings you to this podcast then? Um, Was it the story of the psychic with the bad teeth? I like the I like having a, a psychic sidekick. A psychic sidekick? That yes. would be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. He could just, he'd know every question before you asked. Well, him. he would know exactly the right time to interject. So every time, every time you turn, just hand you what you want. <laughs> <laughs> do you go to psychics? Do you believe in them and that stuff? Uh, I've been to a couple. Oh, you have? I went to a psychic convention mm -hmm. 30 years ago. Um, How many years ago? 30 or something. 80? I was in my 20s. 80 years ago? Yeah, 80 years ago. 80 years ago. As you can see. He looks good yeah. for 100. Don't you think he looks good for 100? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> So you went to a psychic convention? I went to a psychic and it was Did they get invitations wild. or did they all just know it was going to be there? Exactly. <laughs> I walked up to it. sorry. Jeremy. I was like, whoa! Um, yeah, and it's, it is what it is. I think it's kind of fun. Uh, you know, it's, it's like any other thing. It's how much you believe or want to believe. See, I've met a lot of psychics. In fact, I'm friendly with quite a lot of psychics and it's not, it just seems to be like a natural thing. Mm -hmm. they, didn't, they didn't go, oh, I want to be a psychic. They're just like, oh, hello. Uh, I, I feel like I might know something. Yeah. Do you know? And I don't blanch when someone's guy says, oh, I, uh, some people, that, uh, oh, there was a wild story about a, a kid, like he's eight years old, somewhere down here, mm -hmm. and uh, he kept saying these names and uh, his, his dreams or what something was going on and he was on a uh, uh, a bomber a World War II bomber mm. uh, that went uh, got shot down and he was they were the family was fascinated because he was like had such details and stuff and he started listing names and they actually went and found. No what way. the bomber was. So, and this guy, and, and the names he was saying, yeah. this was an eight-year-old boy, the names he was saying were all on that, and they figured out 
kind of taking away all the names that were there, that the name that he didn't say must have been him. Ooh. And this, you know, what I was reaching from out there. And to me, I don't, I don't fear that. Uh, I don't run to it like a moth to the flame, but I go, wow. I, I do believe that anything is possible. Well, they do. Someone said the other day about that thing about energy is that it doesn't disappear. Yeah. It doesn't go. It just changes into something else. Yeah. And you're like, God, that is kind of, hey, did you see all the, was it NASA did this massive photograph thing recently of all the different things that Hubble had seen? It was like the biggest. I oh, love the oh, Hubble. Oh, man. I love the whole, I love the fact that they they took it and they turned it toward the black hole and said let's just eh. and they waited and it to the other side and found what they said eight hundred billion more and my little thing that I love I went to the science Makes you center feel small and so, you feel small? I don't know I, I don't know if I feel small but it's like I just love um, and I didn't realize uh, that. Every star we see is the sun to another setup like ours. Mm. That's insane. Uh, and uh, I saw someone just the other day too saying, "If you're if you're wishing upon a star, you're too late because it's been dead for a trillion years. <laughs> <laughs> we just don't know it yet." Hey, you know, I met this woman last week. I was in Colorado with the moth. I do like the moth, and I met this lovely woman, Kathy Oaken, who worked. She did a story, and she worked on the Pluto expedition, right? And one of the things that she said, well, the things that she was sharing about was that it took, like, like the, the, the craft is like the size of a baby grand piano, right? Okay. And they put it on this big rocket and they sent it to Pluto. And, and after nine years of it heading there, right, mm -hmm. then the, the main computer broke down, sent a message going, nah, call home. And then they were like, what's happening? You know, they wanted to know, because there's two computers, and one of them, the main one had crashed, and then there's the backup computer. And, and what they were saying was, he said, the thing is, is by the time that it got there, it was old. It's like a nine-year-old computer yeah. dealing with a spacecraft heading to Pluto. How mental is that? And that you could message it, but it would take four and a half hours for it to receive So it was message. on AOL. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Four and a half hours for it to receive your message and four and a half hours for it to reply. It's a bit like me and Mark when we're having one of those days where you go, hi. Now, do you know what horses hi. have to do with space travel? What? How horses have actually affected space I travel? I don't think horses can go into space. They could never wear one of those helmets. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? You can't put one of those helmets on a horse. It'd be like a big long head. It'd be a special design one. Yeah. Um, what? The, What's wrong? <laughs> the booster rockets that go on the actual ship that takes you out there, right? Mm -hmm. The booster rockets. Yeah. I think they're made in Colorado and they're shipped love to... Colorado. Colorado, I love you. And they're shipped to NASA where they put them on. Mm -hmm. Well, they have to be shipped. They're not flown. They're, they go by rail. And the rail was decided, the, the width of uh, the rail was decided on uh, wagons. Mm -hmm. uh, and wagons were decided on two horses together. Not four, because you never see four horses this way. You'll see four stacked, two yeah. and two, but it was two horses butts that set the tone for wagons, that set the tone for trains. And because of the train, because of that width, uh, the tunnels could be a certain big, but the, the, the actual train cab or car had to be a certain size uh, so then they had to make sure that those booster rockets fit within that dimension to be shipped. Right. So two horses affects the space travel that we have going to Pluto which I think that's so cool it's like they want the horses but they have affected that ride to Pluto. Aren't horses so all horses different size. size? No but they, 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 they two work horses you know oh, like, big, like plow yeah. size and that yeah, decided yeah, yeah. there. Like kind of a uh, constable you know the constable guy not constable as in even old but constable as in the painter those kind of horses. Do you know Constable the Painter? I don't know Constable the Painter of Horses. Constable the Painter of Horses. He did like the hay I would say it would be better like and all that. Constable. Budweiser, Budweiser horses. No. Uh, well, I guess... Clydesdales. They were, yeah, that's what they are, but they were made famous by Clydesdales. But also because Constable, who's a painter, look him up, Google him, yeah, well. ladies and gentlemen and creatures of Podland, and you will see that he painted the big horses. But I, I don't and those are the horses that knights rode because they had to be... 
They had to be yeah. big and strong I, I to carry the armor. I think being a knight must have been, actually, maybe that's where nightmare comes from. Do you know what I mean? It's to do with the... It's a knight's horse, yeah, a nightmare. Yeah, a nightmare. But, like, I mean, I suppose because it would be a nightmare having a wee metal guy sitting in your... Or a big metal guy sitting in your back. I mean, what could be I fun about that? knights were little guys. They were, they were little, little uh, guys because they were all malnourished. No. <laughs> they were all about 12 and stuff because they didn't live very long. Anyway, point is, I was talking about the moth there and I'm just going to segue, look at this professionalism, ladies and gentlemen and creatures, into stories. So something exciting's happening for you this week, isn't yes. it, Jeremy Ratchford? What this could week, it be? On Thursday night, I take my first class mm-hmm. uh, of You Tell Yours. It's a storytelling, uh, learn to tell a five-minute story. Uh, being taught by. I know, can you believe it that I'm teaching people to speak? I mean, like me, who can just go on and on and on about nothing. I'm teaching people to tell these, con- you know, sort of concise little stories. It's awesome though, isn't it? It's kind of awesome. I've been to two live events so far, the graduating classes, uh, and it is incredible. As I've said before, um, there's a, a, a euphoria mm-hmm. uh, of people, uh, you hear all kinds of stories. Yeah. Uh, some of them are people horrific. People are amazing. Do you know that? People, you people out there, <clears throat> you're amazing. Yeah. Some are horrific. Some are very enlightening. Some are exercising demons. Some are curing a, a, a phobia that they had as a kid or whatever. Anything you can think of, someone gets up there and gives their five minute what happened to them and how it affected them. Mm-hmm. And as I said, one, it, it, it helps them as they tell their story to kind of uh, leave leave the baggage outside when they're done, and the other thing, as an audience member, they I uh, they have to realize that they take away the people in the audience's loneliness because every one of their stories touches you, and you 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 take something from it uh, that maybe you thought only you had, uh, and it it does it takes away your loneliness. Please, yeah. I I, after that, I don't think you need a class. Actually, <laughs> that's awesome. That was a great thing. Have you had a favorite story of the ones that you've heard? Um, it's all right. None of my people that I teach watch this. You'll be safe. <laughs> no, I mean, you know what? It, 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 that's that's it's tricky, isn't it? Almost like trying to pick a favorite child. I know, all... right? I see, because I don't have a favorite. I don't, yeah. and that's weird. I like them all. I, and they all affect you in different ways. Yeah, no, I know. They were pretty awesome people. Yeah. This one will be awesome too. Do you listen to uh, stories on podcasts and things? I listen to The Moth. Oh, you do? And I listen, uh, I my like other favorite is Criminal. Criminal. Criminal is a, a web series. Uh, I, I, I told you about the, the, the one. There was a, there's a, there, it's, it's so hard to describe because it does everything from mm. a guy that was possessed with Raymond Chandler, like he loved Raymond Chandler mm-hmm. and read all his books and did all this, and then discovered at one point that one of his wishes was to be buried. He married his best friend's mom or something like that. I, I, don't quote me on it. Who, but Raymond he, Chandler? Raymond Chandler, guy? yeah. And uh, uh, he wanted to be, they wanted to be buried side by each, and they weren't. Mm-hmm. And this happened like just a couple of years ago that he petitioned and got ashes and urns moved so that they are side by each now. And it was like, so the person interviewing him said, so you've actually involved yourself in his life story now, like you, well, you were a fan. And so it talks about that, but then there was another, the first one I listened to was uh, a woman's found bludgeoned to death on the, the middle staircase. Mm-hmm. Um, and oh gosh, the owl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, she's found bludgeoned to death, bleeding, da 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 da. And the, the scary part is, is that her second husband, who was there, had a similar thing 18 years beforehand. So everyone just went, that's got to be him. But a neighbor down the street who was a lawyer looked at the stuff and they had found owl fibers in her wounds. And owl fiber is uh, like the the parts of their hair or whatever. It's 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 very Specific. unique. And, yeah. And it's discovered that owls are very territorial. Mm-hmm. And when they attack, they attack from behind and the back of the, the right side of your head. And this guy went, oh, I think she was hit by an owl she was bleeding to death and was crawling up but it looks like the crime scene it looked like and and they just rushed to judgment on him that's another one another one was a guy in seattle um they put a concrete island in the middle of something uh in the middle of the uh, major thing up front and people just started throwing couches and filing cabinet like just trash city wouldn't clean it up and this guy didn't know what to do so then he uh uh he can't really tell why but he went and got a uh, cement buddha 
Took him three months to figure out how to put it out there. So in the dead of the night, goes, rebars it, and cements it onto this island. He said nothing happened for about three weeks. And then all of a sudden he woke up one day and it was pointed at his kitchen. He said someone had painted it uh, really nicely white. Six weeks after that, an emerald green. And then offerings started coming, and then a, a thing, and, and people started to worship. And uh, what he then noticed, too, or they said, in a five-mile radius or 11-mile radius, crime, like, went down 90%. No way, because yeah. of a the brother. The drug dealers, the prostitutes left. Well, Everybody left. And they, they, got, they said to the guy, like, why did you pick that? Like, he said, well, if I, if I put Jesus or, you know, they, they, he said, Buddha's neutral. No one, but this is like criminal is this podcast that's got those three stories, yeah, like involved. And the one I told you about too the, earlier was um, counting up the like liars don't use that many words. So the more words people use, the more they're telling the truth. Whereas liars, as we said with politicians, they just say the same thing over and over and over. They don't add to it because they don't want to remember it. But that's pretty awesome. Is it but, weekly? Is it a weekly podcast? Uh, or a monthly? Or so they've got like twenty six of them. I don't. I don't know that world because I just kind of. Get it, subscribe, and then start going through them. Yeah, yeah. and I love the moth. The hey, moth. have you listened to Desert Island Discs? I love Desert Island Discs. Ah, uh, you see, because yeah. apparently Desert Island Discs are all available now. <clears throat> oh yeah, the archives. Yeah, because it was done before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think so, we should do it here. Do you think? Hey, would you like to review some records with me now? How <laughs> awesome was that? How awesome was that? That it was, was so smooth. That was, that was slick. slick. <laughs> yeah, almost slimy. It was slimy, just like slick. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, should we go for this one? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Okay. So I think you might like that. Picture disc, ladies and gentlemen. A picture disc oh. of... Picture disc of Little Richard. Tooty fruity, long tall Sally. She's got to keep a rocking. Or keep a knocking, sorry. Uh, by the light of the silvery moon. By oh my God. Light. Heebie-jeebies. Yeah. Good golly, Miss Molly. Hey, hey. Girl can't Almost, help uh, it. Girl can't help it. All around the world. Lucille. Lucille. This guy, there's no other. You know, there are people that put their mark on rock and roll. Uh, there is no other like Little Richard. He was quite a guy. I'm going to show you this, but look, because look, you see, not pretty. Except the hole, right, for the record. It's got, it looks as if he's got something going on with his teeth. <laughs> so like, uh, but apart from that, you know, if you had to put the hole somewhere, I think that the, on the tooth is probably quite a good one, rather than like, yeah. you know, because it was through the eye or something, that'd be really creepy. But, but then you could put that on a fake wall and yeah, watch people. Yeah, you know, I guess. Was so, it supposed to have affected the Rolling Stones? Little Richard affected the Rolling Stones? I yeah, don't know. Yeah, because their first US TV appearance or something, they had to go on after him. Right. And he just went crazy. And so they knew, like Jagger knew he, he had... Yeah, they had to do something. Yeah, I heard. I've heard something. Yeah, yeah. That is stuff. Mick Jagger is amazing, though, isn't he? Very charismatic. Don't you think he's very charismatic? I mean, people would either. He's have... another one. He, him and Keith Richards. I don't know the other guys. I mean, Charlie uh, yeah. Watts on the drums and uh, Ron Wood and stuff, but Keith Richards and. and is he and made of Mick. wax now? He's <laughs> <laughs> just sort of made of wax. We have like to be careful of the world we're leaving, Keith Richards. Because that yeah. fucker's not going to no, die. No. <laughs> he looks like an apple doll, and he's, he should be dead a thousand times. Yeah. So, <sighs> anyway, point is. Keep it. Yeah, you like it. Gotta yeah. keep it. Do you get any Little Richard stories? I don't need a Little Richard. My... Because Jeremy, uh, trust me, Jeremy has a story for everything. When it comes to, there was a battle for who was the king of rock and roll. Everyone wanted the title king of rock and roll. And the one who wanted it the most was Jerry Lee Lewis. And Jerry Lee Lewis was Jerry the killer. Lee, do you know what was very depressing for me was when I was 13, right? Because I always liked Jerry Lee You could have buried him. No, well, I realized when I just I got over it and then I turned 14 and I was like, oh, I'm too old for Jerry Lee Lewis. You know what I mean? It was like, oh, all changed. That was creepy. I'm sorry. He's a great piano player and everything, but that... Was I've never seen a soul screaming to get out of a body like I've seen in Jerry Lee Lewis. Did you think? It's just, and and I saw a documentary on him too, and he, well, he said he was the king of rock and roll, and his mom said, he said he, he goes, even my mother wouldn't give it to me. Because his mother turned and said, no, baby, Elvis sings the slow stuff too. <gasps> um, but there's a story, an Alan Freed concert, Alan Freed was the DJ that coined mm -hmm. the term rock and roll. And they had rock and roll nights where Screaming Jay Hawk, and they had like lineups that today you unheard of now. Yeah. Uh, but the whole thing back then too was who was going to finish, mm. who was going to end the show. Chuck Berry considered himself 
the granddaddy or king of rock and roll, Jerry Lee Lewis, considered the king of rock and roll. Mm. This is the famous story of Jerry Lee Lewis because it was the, decided that Chuck Berry would go on last. Mm. So Jerry Lee Lewis went out on stage doing his piano thing, and while he was out there, he got one of his guys to go get a, a can of kerosene. It came back with the kerosene, and he got them to turn off all the lights in the auditorium, put kerosene on the, the piano, lit it a fire and did great balls of fire as the piano burned and it was the only light in the auditorium. Wow. And he walked off stage past Chuck Berry and said, finish that. <gasps> and that's that kind of, the only other one, if you see, I think it was Monterey, mm. they, Jimi Hendrix, they wanted him to go on last. Oh, we're done. 20 minutes, no. was that 20 minutes? No way. They wanted Jimi Hendrix <clears throat> to go on last. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know, you got to put the who on last because they'll destroy everything. And they're going, no, Jimmy's going on last. It's got to be Jimmy. And if you watch the footage, the who goes on second, last. And there are roadies and grips running out and grabbing microphones as they start trying to no Grabbing everything, going, no, 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 no. <laughs> and they said in that too, um, Townsend tells the story because it was like they were all full of themselves. And there's Jimmy Hendrix. And he said, he was sitting in a chair or something. And Jimi Hendrix walked into a room and there was a stool in front of him and he stood up on the stool. So he was towering over uh, Pete Townsend and he played his guitar for I don't know how long, mm. like, and right at him. Like, you know, didn't say a word. And Townsend was just like in awe, like it was like kind of a crazy euphoric thing. And then he just got off the stool and walked away. <laughs> <laughs> Though, that they were all in so many drugs at the time, right? Yeah, they're like, did that really happen, yeah. or did he imagine it? Yeah. You know what I've got in my head though, with the like the whole uh, Jerry Lee Lewis setting the piano and fire, and then coming out and like saying full of that. Like if Chuck Berry played the piano, he'd be screwed. <laughs> yeah. But but Jerry was just standing there with his guitar going. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He probably just went, yeah, whatever, angry dude. Anyway, that was 20 minutes, and you've been awesome. You've been awesome as well. Are you excited? Yes. Are you excited? Good, yes. I'm excited. I'm Are you first. excited out there? I know that you're excited, but <laughs> because you're not wearing any clothes. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen and creatures of Podland, uh, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next week. Bye. So, if you want to ask a question, I can't guarantee we'll answer it, but um, but I'll try. You could tweet me a question at, at Lynn Fairgate, or, um, or you can make a comment if you're watching this on the video. And, um, oh, you know what would be awesome? Can you share this? Thanks. Alright, see you later.